Welcome back to the Give Them Roses series. Hopefully you've seen the first episode by now, and if you haven't, here it is linked. But the premise of this series is to break down players that have been immensely successful during their careers, but don't get the recognition that it should bring, either being overshadowed, underrated, or simply unnoticed or forgotten. I can assume you clicked on the thumbnail wondering who this Laker legend is and how he was forgotten. Well today, we'll be breaking down and discussing the career of Michael Cooper. Michael Cooper's story actually begins very early in his life. In 1959, at just age 3, Cooper suffered a severe knee injury that required over a hundred stitches to close. The doctors tried to tell him that he would never walk again. However, as you know by clicking on this video, that did not turn out to be the case. Cooper decided that he was going to continue his life and persevere, and managed to make his way to high school basketball. At Pasadena High School, he performed extremely well before going to the University of New Mexico and dominating with the Locos for two years, from 1976 to 1978, being named first team All-Western. Then, in 1978, seeing his excellence, the Lakers from his hometown of Los Angeles drafted him, beginning his story in the NBA. Michael Cooper was a huge part of the Showtime Lakers, winning five championships in the time he was there, as well as many other awards that we'll get into. But if he won five championships and has all these awards, how could he possibly be overshadowed? Well, as we just said, he was part of the Showtime Lakers, and the same story happened that is usually the case. Good defense was overshadowed by good offense. At the time, the rivalry between Larry Bird and Magic was at the forefront of the NBA. The rivalry nearly saved the NBA from bankruptcy by bringing a lot of views to the teams. Magic is even renowned as being one of the best point guards of all time, which I've also done a video on. On top of this, Kareem was one of the most elite scorers of all time, with his legendary skyhook. Kareem became the leading all-time scorer in 1984, six seasons before Cooper would leave the Lakers. This is the reason they're called Showtime. Two of the best players of the 80s era on one team. And while these players' offensive capabilities were remarkable, putting butts in seats and eyes on the TV, the same could not be said for Cooper. Averaging only 11 points in his best season, and only 8 for his career. So then where did all these awards come from? Defense. Cooper was a monster on defense. Cooper was able to defend multiple positions that the stat score just does not do justice. He could also help facilitate and playmake. However, on the stat sheet, he is once again overshadowed by his teammates as his highest steals per game season. The player who averaged the most steals per game was none other than his teammate, Magic Johnson. And whenever you think of Lakers players that facilitate and playmake, you again think of Magic's passing. Despite this, again, the box score does not tell the whole story. Despite the rivalry between Magic and Bird, Bird spoke out praising how Cooper was a defender giving him a lot of problems. Cooper also went on to win Defensive Player of the Year in 1987, in which Jordan was annoyed that he did not win, but other players and fans backed Cooper and why he won. Michael Cooper continued his success and finished his entire career with the Lakers, with five defensive first teams, three all-defensive second teams, and even though he only won it one year as well, he was top five for Defensive Player of the Year four other years, as well as being top five and six man of the year five times as well. The first few years he was with the Lakers, he also finished in the MVP ladder. But again, Despite all of this, he was overshadowed by other players, fans, and executives that wanted exciting offense, a trend that continues today. So Cooper won no All-Stars or any All-NBA teams, 
his entire career in LA. Meanwhile, Magic made All-Star 10 years and 9 NBA first teams straight while Cooper was there, and Kareem winning 9 All-Stars straight and 3 All-NBA first and 2 All-NBA second while Cooper was there. While this may be nitpicky as to why he's overshadowed, it's actually a piece of something larger as it contributed to the fact that Cooper never made it to the Hall of Fame, with him previously making finalist but ultimately losing with the reason being his lack of All-Stars and All-NBA teams that we just mentioned. This made Cooper and Norm Van Leer the two players to have the most defensive selections of any player to not be inducted into the Naismith Hall of Fame. However, just this year, there was news that he was once again becoming a finalist, making this video actually pertinent to the present. Jerry West, Vince Carter, and Chauncey Billups are also among the finalists. Even with his offensive stats lacking, it should be noted that it wasn't due to a lack of skill. He was averaging 27 points while in college. However, the Lakers drafted him strategically seeing his defense. They told him almost immediately after being drafted exactly what I told you, in the same thought process as the fans, telling him, We got Kareem, Norm Nixon, Jamal Wilkins, and Magic. I don't need anybody else shooting the ball. After this information, Cooper understood his role and took a step back on offense, which takes a lot of humility to do for the sake of the team something that unfortunately a lot of players currently fail to do, causing team chemistry issues and a failure during to the inability to coexist on the court and wanting to claim the glory. The low offensive stats were self-inflicted in order to become the defensive powerhouse he was for the sake of winning, which says a lot of, about Cooper's character and his ability of being a team player. This is very similar to Rodman's success on the Bulls, not needing to score because of Jordan and Pippen, and instead having 30 rebound games in games like 28 rebounds or 49 rebounds with zero points. Because he understood his role, he was able to get the ball for another possession and let his team take care of the rest, being a defensive powerhouse. If Cooper went to another team, maybe both his offense and defense could have shined through but he stayed with the Lakers his entire career, hoping them win five rings. After his time in the NBA, Cooper went on to continue his role in basketball while coaching the Atlanta Dream in the WNBA, before returning to his roots in California, coaching for Culver City High School as of right now. In conclusion, Cooper was a huge piece to the Showtime Lakers, helping their defense, especially against rival teams like the Larry Bird Celtics. But he is often forgotten or not mentioned for several reasons, including his focus on defense over scoring from the advice and staff, the other star power and Hall of Fame calibers of his teammates, and the media and fan focus on the offense and rivalries, which resulted in no All-Stars or Hall of Fame inductions currently. However, he was one of the best defensive players of the time, helping the Lakers win five rings along with Magic and Kareem. And for that reason, Michael Cooper, we give you your roses. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. I know it's a bit of a shorter one, but I wanted to get another Give Them Roses out. And I hope y'all enjoy the series. And with that being said, like, subscribe, share the video around, all that good stuff. And I will see y'all in the next one. Peace out. This, this is, is not okay. This needs to stop now.